Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you. We are fundraising. This is the last day of our annual one-week fundraising drive uh, for the Hunter School. And uh, uh, Lori let me know yesterday that, that we have raised $10,000, which was our, our, boy, do we hope we can hit that goal, because that lets us put a new roof on one of the houses and get uh, basically a new kitchen for another one and, um, and, and paint the outside of the school. Um, we would really like to raise another roughly 10 or 15, actually, to pave the driveway, because this is a major problem. Uh, in, increasingly a major problem, and and also we need to buy generators for the houses. This, this is the last day to do it. So um, I, I, the toll-free number to call and make a donation at Hunter School, you can, of course, go on the website, hunterschool.org, and just follow the donate uh, thread, and uh, you can donate by credit card or by PayPal. Uh, but if you want to call and talk to a person, uh, 800-897-8358, 800-897-8358, and if you want to talk to the people at the Hunter School and ask them any questions about what they're doing, their regular you know, phone number, uh, it's a 603 is the area code uh, in New Hampshire. In fact, it's, as I recall, it's 603-786-9427. It was my, home phone no- or my phone number for five years when I ran the program back in the 70s. I think I still have it memorized. Um, but anyhow, the, the, the uh, number where they can take a credit card is 800-897-8358. And I'd like you to consider even today, today, uh, kind of a special day, give you a donation. Uh, those of you who have been longtime watchers and listeners to this program uh, know all about our cat Higgins, who uh, we, our son had rescued uh, 15 years ago from a, uh, a frat house or a dorm. I, I forget which it was, but uh, these uh, the boys had uh, locked him in the in the bathroom with a pit bull for several weeks he had been a a feral kitten and uh, used to throw him against the wall his only water source had been the dripping dripping faucet in the in the shower and so you know uh, right up until this last week whenever he could get near a shower he would sit underneath the shower head and meow and ask us to drip the water for him and uh, all they fed all, all the only food he could get was pizzas and potato chips and so he constantly you know if those come into our house he would tear literally tear packages apart to get them and he attacked everybody anyhow uh, higgins as you know has been sick and we tried a lot we went through a whole series of vet uh, visits and it finally became apparent that he was uh, almost certainly dying of liver cancer and uh, so louise had been force feeding him for the last geez i don't know month month and a half, uh, you know, grinding up cat food every day and, and feeding him with a, with a 20cc syringe, just, you know, squirting it into his mouth because he wouldn't eat. And the uh, day before yesterday, he just started refusing to allow her to do that. He would, you know, he, he, he would not open his mouth. He spit it out when she put it in. And so, and he, and he was down to just skin and bones. He, even his muscles were disintegrating. He was, you, you could, you could pet him and just feel every vertebrae, every rib, everything. And so we decided, uh, you know, with, on the advice also of our vet that it was time that Higgins was in kitty hospice. And, um, so we put him on, uh, a painkiller tramadol and a, and a relaxant Valium and Louise just she stayed home yesterday uh, and actually most of Thursday and yesterday and just to be sure to every three hours every four hours be giving him his painkillers and his Valium so that he was relaxed and he was fine and uh, at some point yesterday early in the day he basically lost the ability to move he his whole body just kind of shut down and um, but he kept his eyes open, and, he, and every time Louise left the room, he would meow. He would say, you know, don't leave me, and uh, faintly, but he would do so. And so she took him into the bedroom with her, and she worked from the bedroom on her computer all day yesterday and uh, just kept giving him all the water he would take and, and the, the drugs because he would drink water, but he just would not allow food to be put in his mouth. And I got home last night after the TV show at about 8.30, and uh, you know, went to went to bed early to be with Higgins. Higgins was in the middle of our bed between us, and it was amazing. He had been, other than meowing occasionally, he had been basically silent all day. Um, and he likes to purr. 
um, as long as it's Louise or me. And I crawled into bed, and here's Higgins between the two of us, and he couldn't move, and I, and but he just barely moved his paw over, over the edge of the bed. It was like about an inch, and it took him about 10 minutes to do it so that it was just touching my arm. And I was petting him, and he was like trying to pet me, which he liked to do. And he started purring, and it was amazing. And it was just, this was about, I don't know, midnight last night. I mean, we were up for about four hours with Higgins, just laying there, and I was talking with him and telling him that he was going to go into the light and he was going to have a wonderful, wonderful experience. And someday I'd be there too. And we'd hang out together in the light. And, um, so anyhow, I didn't think I would fall apart. I'm sorry. Um, Anyhow, we went to, uh, in fact, I, uh, during this, just maybe five minutes before we turned off the lights, all this, this whole day, he had just kept his eyes open. Like, he would not close his eyes. And uh, looking back on it now, I I've, I've figured out what was going on because he couldn't move his body. And he, I think he knew instinctively that if he closed his eyes, he would just drift off and that would be the end of it. And um, so I took, I, I grabbed my phone when he started purring the last time, just about midnight last night, and uh, just took, recorded a little three or four minute, or four second video clip of Higgins purring, and I don't know if you'll be able to hear him over the sound of the fan in the room, because the the heater was on, but um, he was purring pretty loud for a cat that could hardly breathe, and uh, here's Higgins' last few moments. And then we uh, turned off the lights, went to sleep, and um, with both of our arms on Higgins, and we woke up about an hour later. You know how you wake up throughout the night and woke up about an hour later. I, I woke up, actually, and, and Higgins wasn't moving anymore. And so I woke up Louise, and, and then I sent a text message to our kids. This was at 1.46 in the morning. And I said, uh, you know, he's in the light now. He went peacefully. And Justin, our son, you know, the one who had rescued him to begin with, our reply said, uh, he had a good life. He was a very happy cat, even if it meant attacking unwitting visitors, the old, the young, mail carriers, house cleaners, family, not family, cats, dogs, and the Coens. Our friends, Hal and Shelley Cohen, are, just, you know, wonderful, wonderful people, wonderful friends. And they both, you know, some people just like to talk loud, and, and they're both kind of loud talkers, and that used to flip out Higgins, so which is kind of funny. So anyhow, that was the note that I got back from Justin. So, uh, you know, if you'd like to make a donation in Higgins' memory, uh, Higgins has been up to Solemn, and he's sort of, uh, I mean, we started out rescuing abused kids in 78, and they're still doing that there. 800-897-8358. I guess after we left, we continued that tradition rescuing this cat. Hunterschool.org or 800-897-8358, 800-897-8358, and um, anything that you can give is much appreciated because we really do need to pave that driveway. It would be a really good thing. And I'm going to take a break and blow my nose, and we'll be back. 